Hi, this is Diane Tolene with Parenting Tips. Hope you're all doing well. Hanging in there. Feels like wash and repeat, I know. <laughs> I want to tell you a couple of stories today about keeping in the moment. Because that's what I want to talk to you today about. So years ago, I was in an Easter production at our church. And I was in props. So I was all dressed in black. And I'm sure I had many assignments, but one of the assignments I had was I had to go to the top of this platform. Uh, there was narrow stairs leading up to this platform where there was a spotlight. And at the appropriate time, I had to go up there, bring the spotlight back down when the curtain closed and then before it opened. So I went up there, I grabbed the projector, I was coming down the stairs and the cord got caught. And I'm pulling on the cord and it's dark. You can't see anything pulling on the cord and I see the curtain starting to open and I'm on the stairs with my projector and I'm like oh no and I just yanked it and I just dove off the stairs with my projector as the curtain opened and I just sat there like I did it I did it so there was that one incident another time I was in a production and it, I was a teacher and we were doing some sort of like I talent show or we were doing something to entertain and uh, we were going to sing this song. Now I love to sing, I'd like to be a singer, but people don't really want to hear me sing. I'm not a good singer. But anyway, we're, we're going to do this song and I can sing with a group, but they gave me a solo. This was going to be my debut. My debut. I had one line. I was so excited. I was practicing my line. My husband was showing me when I come in and how to listen to the music and you know all the stuff. Well, anyway, I was very excited and we were all singing our song and then it came to my line and I don't know what happened. I got distracted. I looked away. I saw something move. I don't know what happened. And my space where my one solo debut was going to happen just slid on by. And I missed it. So today I want to talk about moments because we are living in moments right now. And some of them are based on just stuff that happens to us, like a cord getting stuck on the stairs. And it's like, ah, what do I do here? And others are opportunities like my solo. And I missed it. So I was thinking about, uh, inter like when you're watching media, like interruptions and intermission. I heard somebody recently talk about intermission and I thought, oh my goodness, that is me. So when you think about interruptions, isn't it frustrating when you're watching a program, or at least it is to me, when they come on the screen and they say, we interrupt this previously scheduled, whatever they say, program to bring you this special announcement. Or they just bounce something off because a special game's going to be played or something else. And it's like, I know, I wanted to watch my show. Or intermission. You go to a play. Now, I am particularly one who doesn't want an intermission. I don't need to stop and have a restroom break. I just want to watch the show that I came for. And I always feel like this intermission is an interruption. Like, come on, let's get on with the show. Let's get on. I came here for this show. Let's get on with the show. So sometimes I think we are living in either interruptions and an intermission. And it makes me think about plays. I'm wondering, just like in a play, just like in a play, the reason that they close the curtains and then bring them open again or have intermissions is because they're setting a new stage. They're changing props. They're redesigning something to set it up again. Are we in an intermission? Is that what this is? Maybe we're being impatient and it's like, oh, but God is setting the stage for something. Or interruptions, they're bringing us previous, yeah, they're, they're, they're stopping our previously scheduled programming for this important announcement. Well, I'm sure we're all feeling like that. Our previously scheduled uh, appointments and things that we were gonna do have just been like, really, it's still going on? You're probably the same way. I just heard more report again today of something else that is canceled, something else that is put off, and it feels so frustrating. So frustrating. What could we be missing in all this? 
what could actually be happening during these interruptions? What could be happening during this intermission? I know a lot of things are hard. I know that there are hardships that are happening during this time. There are frustrations. There are huge adjustments for everybody. There are tremendous disappointments. Some of them just, you know, like the thing that I heard about today was just like, oh, that's so disappointing. That's not going to happen. And it was just a, a fun thing, a summer thing. But others are very serious. But in this time, I want to stop and look at these moments because I'm wondering, are we missing some moments that are bright spots? And some of these I've read about people saying, some of these I've, I've uh, had conversations with people, and I think, oh, these are great reflections for us to get a different perspective of maybe what's happening. Have you been noticing some special sweet times that weren't previously happened just because you're all together? Have you noticed that with the unscurried schedule that you're realizing that schedule before was unsustainable? That was crazy. That was hard on our kids. That was hard on us as a family. Have you noticed that? That's a bright spot. Have you noticed that the, the uh, meals around the table that maybe weren't happening as consistently as they are now. Yes, it's tiring to cook every meal. But I'm on the other side of that with having children around the table. And now that they're all married and having children, they tell me how much they appreciated how we did that. Well, our life today hasn't exactly lend itself to that with all the sports and all the activities. But now it is the moment. And these are special moments, whether you are appreciating it or not. When the curtain has shut and we'll open on a new stage, are we appreciating some of these things? Are we noticing mm, things that maybe need more attention? Personality traits and strengths and giftings that we've been so busy we haven't noticed it, noticed? Or maybe things are showing up not only personally in ourselves, but in our children that we say, oh, the scurried schedule has kept that undercover, but I'm seeing that that needs attention. So in this time, I want to talk about choosing joy. He has made you the joyful mother of your children. That's what it says in Proverbs. He says, I have made you the joyful mother of your children. Now, isn't that wonderful? He's made you that. Oh, but I don't feel like it. Right. Doesn't mean you always feel like it. But you know what? That's who you are. That's how you've been made to be. So let's look at what we can do to tap in who we are. Jesus said in John 15, this is so good. He said, I picked you for my team. I desire to do life with you. I have told you these things so that my joy and my delight might be in you and your joy and your delight may be full. He told us these things. He said, I picked you for my team. When I was in grade school, I hated that schoolyard pick. But why did I hate it? I was always the last one picked. Darn it, I hated that so much. Even now, when I see a schoolyard pick, I just like, uh, no, don't do it. Don't, don't, someone's going to be last. Don't do that to them. But Jesus said, I picked you for my team. I picked you and I didn't pick you last. So then how do we lean into this joyful motherhood, joyful fatherhood? Well, Nehemiah 8.10 says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So, okay, I need joy then. And it says in Isaiah 12.3 that with, the, um, joy, with, with joy shall I draw waters from the wells of salvation. Okay, then I need joy. How do I get this joy? Joy is in the moment. So many, especially right now, have the opportunity to live in the past. Do you remember when? Oh, do you remember when we could? Do you remember how we? 
and we can idealize the past, all right? Or sometimes if it's negative and that's all we can remember, then we rehash it and rehash it and rehash it. Oh, I wish I hadn't have said that. Oh, I wish I hadn't have done that. Oh, if only. Oh, if I could have. Others live in the future. Oh man, I can hardly wait till, I can hardly wait till it's summer and it's hot and I can be outside and not feel chilly. Yeah, that's me. What are yours? Oh, I can hardly wait till. Oh, I can hardly wait till. Oh, I can hardly wait till. But the past is the past. It's, it's gone. And the future is not here yet. All we have is right now, this moment. And in this moment is where we can choose joy. In this moment, regardless of your circumstances. I've said it before, but remember the Lord said to me years ago, I am not the God of everything being perfect, but I am the God of victory in every situation and in every circumstance. So let's embrace, let's embrace this intermission. Let's embrace these interruptions. Let's let it encircle us. Let's, let's, let's be in it. We can right now live in these days, task by task by task. Each day, tick, 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 tick. Each week, tick, 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 tick. Or we can say, Father, I wanna embrace this. What do you have? while these curtains closed, what do you have in this stage changing? You know, I grew up water skiing. And so because I grew up water skiing, it was never a big deal. And then years later, I went water skiing again. And I was like, oh yeah, I know how to ski. But I had the hardest time. And there's a couple things about water skiing. You know, when you're in the water and they're going to pull you up, there is a place where it's just like you're holding on and the water is in your face. It's just, it's just in your face. And you've got to get through that part to begin to get up, to get your um, skis flattened out so you can get up. Well, when you get to that point, it can be a little wobbly. But where it's easy and where it's fun is when you stand straight up, your posture is erect, your shoulders are back, your arms are straight, and you just let the boat take you and you glide on the water and you could just go for hours. It's so fun. But if you're like this and you're not really standing up and you're not really embracing it and you're struggling and you're fighting, you get tired because it's too much work. Or if you're still squatting in the water and the water is just blowing in your face, you can't do that for very long. It's too much drag on your arms. You can't, you can't hold your breath that long. There's only one place you can be where you can have that joy of the journey of water skiing, and that's standing up. Well, Jesus wants us, he said, I want my joy and my delight to be in you so that your joy will be full. So I wanna say to you, what we've heard Pastor Verna say just recently, take your position and stand. You are the joyful mom and joyful dad of your children. You are anointed for this. Stand up, rise up, take your position, irregardless of the circumstances. If you let that water just in your face and you're drowning, you can't do that. And if you're all hunched over, struggling and trying to wrestle, you can't do that for very long. But if you'll stand up and take your position and be strong, Take your position and be who God's made you to be. He has picked you for his team. This has not surprised him. Ask him, what are you doing in my family in this moment? What are you doing in me in these moments? What are you doing in my children in these moments? We're not going to live in the past. No, we're not going to pine for the future. No. We're going to embrace where we are right now with joy. You can do this. You are anointed to do this. Stand up. Be strong. You got this. God bless you.